All right, everyone. Uh, we have Andre today. This is uh, Afro D uh, Raw Dogs episode one. I was thinking, should I call it Raw Doggers or Raw <laughs> Dogs? But I guess I've made the decision. <laughs> yeah, I mean, it's not too late. I think Raw Dog or, is probably better. Really? Raw, dogs. raw Dog episode one. Well, Raw Dogs. Raw Dogs yeah. with an like, S. Yo, it's like, what up, my dogs, you know? D O G S D A W G S. Dude, I, I pictured the D A W G S for some reason. I don't know uh, why. Got it. R A W. It's just more hip. D A W. Raw dogs. Raw dogs. There you go. No doubt. There you go. Okay. <laughs> okay. So Andre is one of our raw dogs, and he's here for the first ever episode for me talking about the raw dogs. And Every single one of these videos will have one very specific topic. We're not going to go into like million different things and transition. No, no, no. It's one topic. Today's topic is how Andre expresses his subconscious through music. That's the topic. And look, Andre has a puzzled look on his face because he didn't know this. <laughs> it's, everyone's going to be surprised. No one's going to know because I know all these guys personally and I would, I'm, I've been craving to know this man for years, right? Because Andre, why don't you demonstrate to us what you do? Go ahead. Oh, uh, dude, I actually can't. I'm actually getting over a sickness right now. You can probably hear it. So, but I mean, <laughs> okay. there's, there's videos. Just check out my YouTube channel. You'll see. So you see Andre here, looks like a very innocent little, little baby. <laughs> But when you see him producing his, 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 his music, his performance is just, I'm shocked that this is Andre because he screams and it's like, what is it called? Rock? What, what kind of music is this? It, it's, like, it's like metal screaming. Metal screaming. Yeah. yeah. So I, I want to know, Andre, like, how, how the hell did this happen to you? Right? Like, what happened, man? Damn. Um, I mean, growing up, I liked a lot of hard rock. Uh, really? The first time I heard screaming music, I was like, what the hell is this shit? Like, you, I have no idea what they're even saying. What? This is just, this just comes off as pretentious and stupid. <laughs> uh, but damn, I mean, something must have changed because my friend had gotten me into a bit more of the heavier music. And a lot of the bands I was listening to, their old stuffs, they were screaming. So it was like, oh, how how'd they get from here to here? Because I like them here. And then I eventually just went back and it's like, you know, this is actually pretty good. I don't, it's weird. You just get exposure to it. And then at some point it clicks and you're like, this is actually pretty sick. Huh. So you're, you're just, you basically, do you write your own lyrics and then you, what do you do? What's the process, man? Yeah. So as of right now, I'm in a band. It's, uh, the project is called Below Fiction. We are probably going to change that. But, um, so what I do, I'm obviously the vocalist. I do the, uh, writing of the lyrics and, uh, lyrics, like I used to write poetry all the time. So it really clicked. And one thing with me is melodies like just don't come to me. So it's almost like a crutch in a way because I just have to scream it. Like it's more either, is it high or low? Cause it's not a real note. So, <laughs> so I'm really good at writing lyrics. I'm really good at like the iambic pentameter, like the flow mm -hmm. of the words, um, you know, kind of like rap. And there's, there's kind of a rap element to our newer stuff, which is, which is cool. But, uh, but yeah, dude, writing is a big outlet for me, along with just fucking screaming, because I used to be the kid in high school that would be just stone quiet. I wouldn't say anything. I was that shy kid. And then, you know, I've, I've never been up on stage. I was never a stage kid. I was never an athlete. Surprisingly, I kind of should have been. But um, once I got up on the stage and I got confident with my group of guys uh, in my band, uh, first time on stage was just, it was just a crazy experience. Like I just got right up there. We did everything that we had rehearsed. The, the confidence was there and, uh, it just really built up from there, but it was just outletting and screaming, hearing your voice echo across the whole venue. It, 
it was life changing, bro. I, I really love that feeling. Life yeah. changing. Fuck. Yeah. yeah. Wow. I, I mean, from being like the shy kid in high school where everyone just kind of blew you out to the side, just be like, oh yeah, he's a nice kid. And that's it. Um, to just kind of showing a side of my life and who I am that's really edgy, you know? Hell yeah. Metal screaming. Now, let's say one of us wants to do this. We can't just do it in our apartment, right? Like, what do we need? Some kind of soundproof, like Darth Vader mask? Like, what do we do? I mean, well, first of all, I'd probably, what I do in my car is like, I'll listen to my my music. And the thing is, the music has to be really loud because Uh. you don't want to over scream like over the music because there is a balance and if you hear anyone screaming without music it sounds bad (laughs) even in the studio if they're professional it just sounds bad (laughs) i don't know why but Um, i mean that's how i practiced um i used to play like this rock band video game and you'd have the microphone you'd sing or scream whatever and some songs had screaming so i would try to learn how that person was screaming from hearing it and uh and that's really how I started. Super great. Wow. When you scream, is it literally the loudest possible you can do? <clears throat> so there's different types of screams. Um, like the low scream, which is called false chord. It's actually like the folds beneath your vocal cords. So it's not your vocal cords getting the damage or, you know, just mm. that harsh sound, um, ideally, because some people do it wrong. But um, those are not as loud as like high screams. Like high screams are much more up here in like the back of your throat. Uh, those are pretty loud. So, um, so when we record, you know, a lot of times I'll, I use the same mic, by the way, when we record, um, I'll have to back up because if I'm doing like a high really quickly, because it just is just piercing. So hmm. I want to get a little bit deeper into the, 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 the psychoanalysis of this. It's, I'm really interested in it because I remember when I was at strength camp, one of the things Elliot had us do was, you know, when you do the thoracic extension, right? You, you have a fucking uh, 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 the foam roller and you just lay back like that. So what Elliot would do is imagine I do this like every day at the gym. It's fucking weird. Like I, I, I do, I'm there and then I make my face like, and I'm just like going crazy, right? And I'm upside down. So if someone opens the door and like sees me, (laughs) like what the fuck? Now, he was showing us that our facial muscles have to be a certain way in terms of being one with nature. Because in nature, animals, we, we do scream. We do have anger and frustration and we express ourselves and in today's world perhaps we can't do that so much or we hide it or suppress it so does that kind of make sense sort of when you let it out oh definitely it's it's a big release for me like especially if we are like practicing usually practice on sundays as a band um i'd always just feel better after it's it's a big stress reliever And uh, a lot of it's probably because I am kind of more of a tight uh, person that does not express things. I'm not loud. Uh, At least, you know, I've kind of mediated it quite a bit into a more healthy range. But I've always been that quiet kid that's just like, hey, you know, just really, you know, one of those things. So letting it out and just being really expressive and not giving a fuck like about my volume, Mm. what I'm saying even, because a lot of the stuff I say is pretty... It's pretty angry. Uh, really? So, yeah. I mean, I, I've done a lot of, um, it's cathartic, you know, one writing mm-hmm. the lyrics and then, you know, if, each time we do the song, it, you know, obviously the words are there and they have the, the intensity behind them. It's not just screaming about, you know, uh, like kittens and stuff like it, it connects and meshes in that, in that same way. So it is cathartic to, to go through and just scream those words and let out those feelings in a safe way, I think. Wow. Do you become a different person on stage? You know, I don't, I wouldn't say so because the lyrics are so tied to me and my inner feelings. 
it's more like I, I am who I am, but this is a side of me that I don't really show because, you know, society, you know, societal pressures or me just wanting to be, to come off as a nicer person. Uh, you know, like mm. I'm, I'm really even keel and balanced with my views on things like spirituality and religion. But a lot of our songs like are pretty like anti-religious um, in a way, just because really? the organized religion and my upbringing had really caused some, some trauma in me. So, so yeah, like one of our YouTube videos is a lyric video and I've actually posted it on Reddit in like a Reddit uh, subreddit for screaming and the the dude made a comment on the lyrics he's like those are those are pretty pretty harsh dude <laughs> and it's like oh i mean yeah but yeah taking a step back it's like yeah it's not mm -hmm. it's not like super violent explicit in in no logical way i mean there is logic behind it and there's a lot of thought that i put in the words and you know all the elements of poetry and writing uh, mm -hmm. so it's not just blameless just fuck this fuck that fuck the world but but yeah, it's very, it's very intense. Hmm. Do you find this expression in anything else besides screaming and metal? Other activities you do or anything like that? Releasing. Um, I, mean, I mean, in a physical way, obviously exercising. Um, I'm not one of the dudes that grunts at the gym. And I, I think there could be benefit to it. But um but I mean, just exerting myself and just pushing and, you know, you tighten up kind of in the same way, like your core gets tight when you scream a lot of times because hmm. um, you're using your diaphragm and everything. But, um, but yeah, I would say working out is, is kind of similar in that way. Mm -hmm. I know when I'm at the gym, I, I breathe very, um, very, I'm very extroverted in my breathing. Like it's very obvious. So literally people from the other side of the gym can hear me breathe, bro. Like it's unbelievable. Like if, I, if I'm like, tss, like tss, and I'm like doing it like boxing or I'm doing something like I can like feel like, holy shit, everyone can hear me breathing. <laughs> and it wasn't like that before. It wasn't like that before. It's, it's become very explicit. It's interesting. So fitness is the other one. Wow. What, what advice would you give, man? to someone because like, here's what I imagine, right? Some kid in India in, in like the city watching this YouTube video and there's a bunch of Indian viewers and he's kind of shy and doesn't really have activities to express himself, right? He, he might be a porn addict or he might be a video game addict or, you know, he's trying, he's trying. Like I have this theory that our social interaction, physical, right? If you say it's here, right? This is our, all our social interaction. This is the level, right? If you add text message, video games, Instagram, blah, 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 you add all of that stuff, maybe it'll go like here. And then once we become addicted, we're trying to get closer and closer to this thing, which we can't because there is no substitute for this. Um, hugging, kissing, you know, being with family, like having dinner, like all this stuff. And so what do you tell that kid to do? <laughs> I mean, uh, I would say you need to find an outlet like that. And if, you know, if you really like music and rock music and just that letting out that anger in a controlled way, uh, just go to a show. Because I remember the first time I was at like a really heavy metal show. Um, it was actually Parkway Drive for anyone that knows. That was just a huge moment for me. I was literally just at a high school. And uh, the first time you get into the mosh pit, and this is very interesting. It's, it's like a primal nature. Like there's all these guys, you know, everyone knows like who the alpha is in, in a way. But there is a point where it doesn't matter. Like this anything that's surround or outside of these walls does not matter because there's an imminent something event going on right now. And when you, when you finally get the balls to actually get inside of it and just a lot of it, a lot of it sometimes is just running around in a circle and no one's like really just pushing or swinging. Uh, that's probably the best uh, way to go about it. But 
once once you join the pack of just a flood of people it some like just inside you is just really at ease in a way because everything else is so focused on the now it's it's really it's really crazy hmm man i i i need to do this then yeah so- <laughs> so well, and one and one thing I want to bring up surrounding that um you know a lot of people when you're in a group setting like a collective and a lot of the things that maybe social like social pressures that is surrounding things like why someone would approach someone why they wouldn't um it's kind of shut away cuz everyone's here usually for this specific event or these people so you already know you have some stuff in common but Um, when I used to be just a fat overweight kid with no muscle mass, you know, I was, I was kind of just one of those kids that sat back and like, you know, sit in the back and I was still like screaming the lyrics because I love the music, but, uh, it really changed, um, in the past, like four years as I started working out, uh, doing a lot more healthy stuff, uh, eating well. And now a lot of people come up to me and they're like, Hey, like they point up to the ceiling they're like hey can you push me up to crowd surf wow. and it's like so like i literally know this because when that moment like hit where the first person asked me it was like two or three people at the show it's like what the fuck like people see me as a strong person <laughs> it's like this is not the andre that i'm used to like a lot of people come up to me and just are like hey can you pick me up and i'm like i mean i guess i probably could <laughs> cuz i'm just not there yet in my mind i'm i'm still me it's but people see you in a different way once you you know obviously look different but in in my mind i'm still me i'm just like yeah i lift weights that's something i do uh I, i'm really healthy and uh all the other stuff that comes with it but mm. but that's super interesting in that group mentality and just mm. you know super cool i would uh, i would tell you one thing and and then we'll end this video um this may help you in the future. It's called the alter ego. You probably already know about it. But I'm watching uh, Todd Herman. He's the guy who wrote the book, The Alter Ego Effect. I'm watching his uh, interview right now with London Real. And he said that he has four alter egos. And he will change from one to another depending on what he's doing. So when he's with his kids, he's like Mr. Rogers, you know, with his kids. And then when he's with business, he's that. When he's on stage, he's that. Like Geronimo with his business people, right? And he said that as kids, we have this inner child in us and we are always imagining and pretending and playing these games because we have a great imagination. And then that becomes sort of childlike as we grow up and we lose it. So if you tap into your alter ego, when someone says, oh, hey, can you please pick me up, uh, sir? If at that moment you are Hercules, for example, well, of course you can, <laughs> right? It's, it's, a, it's an interesting thing because he says all the top athletes, like Kobe Bryant is the black mamba. You know, he activated that later on in his career when he went through that divorce thing, right, with his wife and the scandal, the sex scandal that's when he activated the black mamba because he was like kobe bryant is going through a divorce but the black mamba is still going to kick ass in basketball (laughs) right and the top and the top athletes actually use this all of them this thing like bo jackson used to use it use it you know he would say like "Ah, bo jackson has never played a game in his life (laughs) It's this other character. It's like, oh, what? So cool, eh? Might be something to think about. Yeah, definitely. I mean, even just literally specifically, because everyone has their different roles and stuff. So you kind of have it in a in a small way. But yeah, literally cutting that off and compartmentalizing that, that's super, super smart psychologically. Yeah. I'll and, have and- to come up with some. <laughs> Dude, the guy's crazy because he, he literally in the book goes into detail in what he does. So he'll literally like, so, so when he was writing, he was Darth Vader, right? Because Darth Vader doesn't give a fuck. So he would wear, he bought this $500 Darth Vader mask and he would wear the mask and he would breathe. 
you know, he would breathe and then he would literally start writing his book as Darth Vader. Like he went through this craziness, right? Or like he'll like touch his ear and like flip a switch, like physically he'll like flip a switch or he'll wear glasses, uh, non-prescription to be smart in an interview. Like he literally does it like a religion, man. So something, something interesting to figure out. That's crazy. One, yeah. one stupid thing, uh, I actually, you know, as a kid, I would go to like amusement parks like locally and I would be Sonic because I, I used to play video games, that blue hedgehog, uh, yeah, you know, he runs around, does like loop-de-loops and stuff. And I'm like, okay, we're going to go on this roller coaster. We're going to do the double loop, but Andre's freaking scared right now. So I'm Sonic. So, <laughs> you know, it's kind of a childish thing, but ch- children do do that. Yeah. You know, I went to a phase like I'm Batman. It's like, I don't know why, but I'm Batman. <laughs> but that's very interesting. Yeah, bro. Very cool. And, and he says when you are in, like, sometimes we have the skill to do what we need to do. It's only social pressure that stops us. So if we become this other character, then it's over. Because you're acting through that character. And it's not the character. It's what the character represents in your mind. That's what it is. So good shit, bro. Good shit. Awesome. Awesome. All right. Thanks, dude. Thanks a lot for sharing your really inner, inner details with us. And uh, I'm sure the viewers will give this a shot. This music, screaming, metal, check out your stuff. I'll post a link to your channel so they can check out your channel. And, uh, you know, guys, subscribe. This guy's, uh, for a lot of them don't know this because we didn't really talk about it, but Andre is my intermittent fasting teacher, my extended fasting teacher. You know, whenever I'm in trouble, I'm like, oh shit, I'm four days in a fast. This is happening. What do I do, Andre? He has the answer or at least some tip to help me. So, and he'll be making a lot more videos about intermittent fasting and, and extended fasting, whatever, raw fasting, water, you know, <laughs> whatever you want to do. He, he knows his shit, um, doing those seven day fasts and whatnot. So, uh, yeah, man, yeah, yeah, man. any, any, uh, any, f- you know, near future content happening that, that you're feeling. So I'm looking forward to doing the intermittent fasting ones. I'm actually going to take my time on them and edit them uh, pretty well. So people can just digest it because it it can be hard. uh, Pardon the pun. But yeah, (laughs) so look, look for those. And of course, some screaming videos. I'm I'm still going to do those on my channel. So check it out. Awesome. Thanks, Andre. Thank you, Farhan. I'll see you soon. Bye, man. See you soon.